Okay, besties, let's talk about the Sarah J Mass live event. We've only got three minutes, so we're going to go fast and we're going to make every second count. First of all, there was no big announcement. This was an ACASIF event and she spoke about ACASIF. I was just stoked to hear my favorite author talk about a book that clearly meant a lot to her. It was great. So first of all, A Quarter Silver Flame started as a blank manuscript where she would write what happens next as she was writing A Quarter of Wings and Rowing because she needed to know what was going to happen to write what was currently happening to finish the original Akatar trilogy. But obviously she loved it so much she had to keep going. She always knew it was going to be a nest of POV because she wanted to take a flawed character and write her journey. She mentioned that she was in quite a dark space when she was writing A Court of Silver Flames in regards to her anxiety. And that book is a testament to where she was versus where she is now. She also touched on the importance of found family, which was very emotional. She was wiping away tears. So was I, because I have found my own found family in the Sierra J Mass fandom and book talk. Um, you know who you are. It was, yeah, it was, it was a very special moment. She mentions that when she was not feeling so great, she made a trip to New Zealand and visited a lake which is what the lake that Cassian takes Nesta to to heal is based off. Um, I looked into it and I'm pretty sure it's a lake in Rotorua in New Zealand, which is a really important lake in Maori culture in regards to healing. So that's like a very special thing to me. And I'll definitely be visiting it soon. Moving on to what's coming next, she mentioned that she's currently working on Crescent City 3, but there's four Crescent City houses, and also Akatar only started as a trilogy too, so, you know. She said that the first three Crescent City books will be Bryce and Hunt books, but there are other characters in Crescent City that she wants to explore as well. At one point in the conversation, the interviewer said, while the door is shut on Throne of Glass, to which Sarah responds, but is it? Which obviously gave me a freaking heart attack. She also mentioned that she has been thinking about the witches recently. Um, why? She also said that the maps in Prithian, specifically the southern continent, have been deliberately left blank. So there's a reason for that, which is very interesting. And then we moved into questions. My bestie Jennifer asked a question about Gwen being a light singer and Azrael being a shadow singer. I asked a question about time travel between the worlds and she was very cagey and didn't answer the question, which I think says everything that we need. First of all, I do love Sarah directly quoting herself. This is a quote from Akawar, um, and um, she basically just um, used the different sort of strength part um, verbatim. Um, this is quite exciting because it sort of tells you that, oh, Elaine's maybe misunderstood, and you still are yet to see the sort of um, strength to her because it's underneath the surface. And then, of course, it's really important to look at the fact that she said um, she's a quiet dreamer um, because, of course, we have this running theme of calling um, the inner circle um, also the court of dreams. So essentially, both things that Sarah mentions in her answer directly link back to this quote and sort of debunk it as perception versus what we'll actually see. Before committing to that one. But yes, Crescent City will go on and I, I have separation anxiety obviously <laughs> it was meant to be three books now it's ongoing um yeah throne of glass is technically ended but is it um <gasps> you just freaked the internet just like <laughs> there was a disturbance in the force <laughs> and i've said before like there are other stories in that world that i want to tell at some point so like the door is not fully closed to that sure. it But that's but, the question, Sarah. Yes, the question <laughs> is, Elaine, you know, you'll get more it's, of Elaine in the next, I'm not going to promise anything. You'll get more of her in some form in the next book. I haven't written the thing yet, so you'll see. That's all I will say is you will see. Um, so wait, let me, yeah, let me tack on to this then. What's coming next? 
So right now I'm working on Crescent City 3, which I don't want to spoil Crescent City 2 if you guys haven't read it yet, so I'll refrain from that, but there's, it's a lot of fun. Crescent City, I'm having a lot of fun um, with that book. Um, it's another, it's another long one. Uh, <laughs> a doorstop. Three, and how many books are in the Crescent City series? Do you know yet, or can you share? So right now, I am contract under contract for three but i will say that there are like four houses so and we have <laughs> named after a house so oh so there it is <laughs> um but it's, it's again kind happen. of like that it's it's like that akatar feeling where you know these first three books are like bryce and hunt's story but then there are a lot of characters walking by mm -hmm. you know and like you said i could just follow them through the into door. the next room yeah yep, yep. and so I, what's I, in there yeah but i kind of have like an idea in my head of who who's next but i'm i'm waiting to see like before committing to that one but yes crescent city will go on and i i have separation anxiety obviously it <laughs> <laughs> was meant to be three books now it's ongoing um yeah throne of glass is technically ended but it, uh, <gasps> you just freaked no! out. The internet just like <laughs> there was a disturbance <laughs> in the force. And I've said before, like there are other stories in that world that I want to tell at some point. So like the door is not fully closed to that. Sure, it never there. is though. I mean, oh, no. yeah. I don't know. Do you feel this way? Like you know, just having this book is a tangible bit of proof of like this is where I was and I climbed out of that hole with Nesta bit by bit in the months that I was working on this book were some of my initial months in therapy like remember like where I I was and yeah. the whole hike that Nesta and Cassian go on through the mountains like that was inspired by me being in New Zealand going on that exact hike with <laughs> Josh there was something about that land that speaks to me. And I just like, there was something in that moment where like I was walking that step by step with Nesta and like having like just going into like so deep into my head, staring at Josh's back for like two hours, like, <laughs> out facing me up the hill and I'm just like, <laughs> trudging along. But I left that trip feeling so much like, Clearer, but I love so many things about Nesta. Um, let's see. To go with something sillier, I love Nesta's obsession with smut, smutty books. <laughs> yes. Scott, why one not? One of us. <laughs> why not? Yeah, she's one of us. I mean, I also just, I love that Nesta's not scared of like anybody. Like that is, oh my, like one of my favorite moments is like when she sees like Helian for the first time in I think it's in Wings and Ruin and he's like hello and she's like no it <laughs> just keeps walking by you know I I really truly believe that heroines and people and like the real world like no one is perfect you know, you know Nesta I didn't I didn't want to write about someone that is just like innately good and perfect and has no problems like you know I think everyone in their life has made missteps and there's Things that people, have, you know, we all have done that we regret and we learn from and we're capable of change. And, you know, just because Nesta in the past has done some things and said some things that, you know, are not nice or okay in some scenarios, it doesn't mean that she can't learn from them and reflect on them and grow into a better version of herself. And those are the kind of journeys that I love writing about the most is when you face those dark parts of yourself and those broken bits and learn, like, you know, reflect on not just what you did, but why you might have done those things. And that's when the true work is done and the true growth happens. And you're able to move on. Like, you know, you're not doomed to be an asshole forever. You can blossom into something new. And, you know, any day is the day that you can decide that you're going to change and you're going to learn. And, includes Elaine. Will we be getting some Elaine POV in the next Akatar book? Understanding who she is, what she thinks, and what she feels. And will we also be getting some more Azrael POV in the next book? Like in that bonus chapter that you included in Akasif. 
Thank you so much for answering my question, and thank you so much for doing this event. Oh, I love she had all your books. That was a beautiful room. I pay, I paid her $50 to oh do my that. God. Can she come over? I mean, look at my mess. Come over and do my room. Oh, right, yeah. that's the question. I, I, I to make sure that all my stuff. Was I've been good. noticing your like beautiful birch trees in the background. Oh yes, um, this is one of those like fancy art TVs where it like displays. So like every day I change it based on my mood. And so before this event, I was like, okay, what's a very avatar type thing? A snowy wood. Uh, yes, but I also have like my collection of my little ponies there in the back. Plus, like up there and there. And, uh, you can't see here, but I have a Sailor shelf. Moon. My yes, Sailor Moon, and multiple places here. It's just like my shrine to my childhood self. I love it. Uh, but that's but, the question, Sarah. Yes, the question is, Elaine. You know, you'll get more it's, of Elaine, and then I'm not going to promise anything. You'll get more of her in some form in the next book. I haven't written the thing yet, so. You'll see. That's all I will say is you will see.